Hey, got the old Dodge in the shop. Took me about 72 and a half months to get her on the car coffin and get her off the car coffin. And was really quickly reminded why I need to get the old electrotronic winch fixed on the trailer. I actually need to paint it, put tires on it, and bearings and lights and you know, just the regular maintenance stuff. But actually, if you guys want to see that, do the old <laughs> down below and let me know, and we might just make a video of her. We're going to try to figure out why this thing is overheating. Put some shine on her. I'll show you how to do that for about 20 bucks. And then maybe even go take a cruise if we got enough light left. Well, I already got the battery charging. Of course, that's always step one. And then I picked up some uh, basic parts here that I'm really hoping is the problem, but you never know. Uh, got the old water bubbler here. And of course, you gotta pick up the old for that. And lower radiator hose. I really hope that's the lower radiator hose. I don't know. Rock Auto, I trust them. And then of course, Instead of doing, you know, license plates and registration and that stuff, I did the right thing. Picked up an aluminum radiator for it. Cooling systems can be a little scary for most. The good news is there's really only four things that can go wrong. Of course, you got the old head gasket, but on this one, she's not milky. I didn't see a lot of bubbles or pressure when we first got her fired up, so I don't think it's that. And then you got the old uh, water bubbler, the whirly woo, and then of course the radiator. I'm thinking I can eliminate two today by fixing those. And then all we'll have left is a water pump, and I really hope it's not that one because that means I gotta do real work. But I think we're gonna start with the old uh, thermostat here and see what happens. Yeah, you fellers should know by now that I really enjoy reading your comments and what have you. And there's a lot of you that say taking the thermostat out actually cool the motor down, but I learned from the old timers that you actually want to have, yeah, get off of there. You actually want to have those thermostats because what she does is eases the old water down as she comes back into the radiator, lets the old radiator do its job before she hits the block again. Yep, yeah. Well, I'm hopeful it's the thermostat, actually, because the guy got his eyeballs in here, and I'll be dipped if the lower radiator hose isn't just split right there. Jim and Shepard's rotten eggs. Well, I was totally expecting these to be just froze on it. That's a different size. Well, that tells the guy that someone's been in this before. You got 9 sixteenths on one side, and half on the other. Okay, I guess we got a Japanese bolt on the one side. A lot of you are probably chuckling because you got these sockets in your tool drawer, but you know what? They work pretty dang good. I ain't gonna lie. Oh wow, didn't even have to hit it with the hammer. That looks factory. Oh, yeah. I'll get you in here, but, oh boy. Well, that's what we got going on. I'm gonna show you how to test on them thermostats. Well, there's two ways that I like to test on these old thermostats, and it depends if a guy's wife's at Walmart or not. If she's not at home, I'll just take the old thermostat, throw her in a pan, toss her up on the old stove, and hit the gas. Once that water's about ready to boil, that thermostat should open. If it doesn't, she's stuck. The other way is you just gotta get some heat on her, however possible. And it seems like a relatively fast way to do that. Yeah. Well, since I'm AS3 certified, I probably learned you up something here on the old thermostats. Even though it may look like a wizard made one of these, they're actually pretty simple. They got a copper center and a spring. All of them, well, most all of them have a temperature stamped on the old bottom end here at what temperature they should open up on a guy. 
And instead of overheating the crap out of the car 16 times to see if this opens, we're gonna take some heat and apply it. We wanna see that spring go ahead and collapse down on a guy and open up the center, and that'll tell us she's opening up. There you go, you can see there, she opened up right now. So it definitely was at the thermostat. And a guy wants to save two bucks, he can throw that one back in. Well, I gotta be honest with you, I was kinda really hoping it was gonna be the thermostat. And then I could be lazy on you and say, just kidding, on a future episode, we'll put the radiator in. But now I suppose I gotta do something. I hope it's the radiator and not the water pump, so break out the tools here and get started. <sighs> Just dawned on me that I forgot to drain the old radiator before I went ahead and spent 16 days rolling it in here. So I'm hoping that it overheated violent enough to just blow all that out of there and I don't gotta worry about it. I could put up with anything on my floor I'm talking all the way down the goose poop. But you put some cooling on this sucker and I just cannot stand it. Okay, yep, mm-hmm, okay, yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, gotcha, yep, mm-hmm. Well, whoever went ahead and engineered on this last time did a pretty decent job. They just uh, went ahead and didn't put everything back in as far as fasteners and bolts go. Makes it easy on the next guy. What's that look like? Three eighths, maybe? Give her a whirl. Yep. Well, my plan here is to be as lazy as possible and not even take off the lower radiator hose. Jiminy Christmas, that came down. Well, anyway, we're gonna try to ease her up around the old fan blade here and just snip her on beside it and Hopefully not have to deal with trying to fit my ogre arms down in there and get that hose clamp off. These look like the original clamps. They've got a standard or flathead screw on it. and Yeah, that's just not gonna happen. All right, now the super easy part is just easing this radiator out of here. Oh, wait a second. Oh, that buck's still full of water. All right. You just gotta ease on them. Ease, ease it out. Get out of there, get out. Get that hose under. You wanna get it under here. Oh no, that don't look right. You gotta come underneath the bottom. Oh no, don't spill. I don't want that coolant. Oh yeah, there we go. Aha, and then you just, oh, oh dang. Got it. No big deal. You just gotta get them out like that. Piece of cake. Boy, what an opportune time to clean all this up and change that generator belt. So we're not gonna do that. Now that we got this old bear out, you can see she's been fixed on a couple times, but boy, is she leaking and still had some issues. So we'll go ahead and snag her out anyway still and snip this new Champion aluminum one in. And uh, it's gonna look really weird underneath this hood. You can really tell when the UPS guy isn't in the cars when your package gets delivered like this, he really eased her up on the old step. Let's see what we got here. Yep. Yeah. This is honestly way too good for me. Oh no, it's shiny. Shiny stuff makes me really nervous. Wow, I'll be dipped. 
Now a guy's about 64%. Sure, he fractured an eardrum pulling the old one out, but nice thing about this aluminium is she's light. And of course she's empty, so hopefully getting her back in goes easier. The guy's just not used to the shiny stuff. Oh man, that's that's too easy. Well, that confirms something bad's gonna happen because that went way, way too easy. Boy, that's as snug as a bed bug. Just gotta snag these couple bolts in here. And then we'll clean up the surface for the old thermostat, snip the top hose on, and I think we'll fill her up with some water and see what happens. Well, before I go ahead and replace the thermostat, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the surface with a flap disc here and prevent the guy from changing out the old a second time. You want to give on them about 10 foot pounds, which, yeah, that's probably right about, oh, there. And, yeah, right there. Just use the, use the old forearm torque wrench and they'll get you about anywhere you need to go. Boy almighty, I could drink some beer with the guy that made these here flex hoses. Them sure are dang handy. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'll be dipped if the old Beatria wasn't charging as indebted than Elvis. So I'm gonna go to Plan H and charge on this bad one. I got here uh, one of those auto digital chargers, so when they're all the way dead, they don't fire right on. So what I did was took one of these here jump packs and you just got to tickle on it a little bit. You just, just a tickle. But you got to be careful because we got 12 volts and six volts and I think that equals somewhere in between like yellow volts. It's not good for the stuff in there anyway. But all you need is just a and it gets the charger going. I'm gonna go ahead and snip in one of these Edelbrock fuel filters. Kind of fond of these little buggers and they're about the same price as those glass ones that burn down 11 billion cars every week. And they're nice and small. This gas smells like a baby's diaper. Woo. Well, going from this to a threaded fitting is wrong in three different languages, but I don't have the right barbed fitting on there, so we're just gonna close our left eye and put her in anyway. Well. Since she went ahead and fired up on a guy so easy last time, I'm gonna change on the oil, I guess. You know, I don't always change on these oils, but this one runs so good that I figure I gotta reward it somehow. Plus there was some diesel oil on sale, so I went ahead and snagged some of that up. And I got about a 0.0% .0 chance of knowing how long this has been sitting, so I wonder if I should see if that's even on any. Yeah, it's close enough. <laughs> Guy has seen himself die about 15 times in his dreams from the old jack stand fail. So I like to test on him a little bit before I crawl underneath him. And then a guy should always have a jack underneath there so they can drag your body out after they find you. Hmm. Forward thinking. You don't want to get the right wrench. Just get the croissant wrench. Oh yeah. Boy, this concrete feels warm. What am I even looking at? It Oh, this oil pan is bigger than the RMS Titanic. I ain't kidding you, fellers. This is like the Beyonce of oil pans. Boom. Oh boy, she was ready now. Perfect time for my oil pan to be full. Great. 
grand. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and not move this thing and just be inconvenienced by it. You know, it looks like back in the day, the old engineers actually wanted a feller to work on their cars, and made it easy. That sure ain't the case anymore. That boiling battery, you know, right up the old nose holes. Sure smells nice. Did you hear that? That's about 14 brains exploding. For you young fellers, the old oil filter's up top. I'll be dipped. I'm sure all your fellers know this, but whether she's a top loader or a bottom, make sure you run oil around these rubber rings. Otherwise they'll bind up on a guy and she'll spring a leak. Guy went ahead and grabbed on one of these funnels. Let's make sure they're clean. And then ease them in there. And then uh, this says Cummings on the front, so that'll eat. Yeah. Ah! Well, the guy's gonna go ahead and forget we got trash bags as a back window and put some shine on her. You're gonna need a couple things here, but here's the dealio on the dealio. I'm not a body man, but. I do know how to make garbage shine. You're gonna need a couple things. You're gonna need one of these here lanolin Whirler 9000s. You can get them pretty much anywhere. You're gonna need some of this sauce. You can get her pretty much anywhere. This is your cost, it's about 20 bucks. All you need to know about this stuff is the sriracha digs and the mayonnaise smooths out. And then I got this here Trades Pro uh, machine. And um, it's not good. I mean, it sounds like gravel in a washing machine, but it gets the job done. That's about all you need. I'll show you how to apply it. Just like when a guy washes a car, or paints, you wanna start on the old lid and then get to the boot and the bonnet and work your way down. Especially with the sriracha sauce, cause she splatters. But I know you're excited, so. We're gonna start on this door, cause it's easy. And uh, you definitely don't wanna cut corners and wash it, but I'm not. So as far as how much you use of this, I don't know, you'll figure it out. Just put it on. And then uh, if you've got a selector for RPM, all of it. But start out slow, get her in, get her on there, fly it, put it on. Get it in here, smear it around. And then just, you just ease in it, like this. And then once she starts drying up on you, then you feed her the onions. So I'm gonna finish apart here and then we'll get you in here. Well, here's the little section we ended up with. I'm gonna go ahead and learn on you a little bit what I know. I know this is a single stage enamel for a few obvious reasons. One, it's not the original color. Two, there's these really heavy, thick runs about every three and a quarter inches all the way around the entire car. And uh, just the way that the, the paint is chipped, I can tell that it's not a base clear, which that's really obvious, but I was curious if it was a lacquer paint that's not. Lacquer is applied in many, many, many thin layers where enamel, especially if a guy paints like me, you just get her on pretty quickly, but then it chips and flakes easy and you can see stuff like that. So I know she's a single stage enamel, which means you can really dig on them with the product, but if you've got base clear, you'd probably use a foam pad and a little bit different sauce. You might even wet sand or just clay bar it. So be careful before you dig into this and I would probably do a very small test spot somewhere where a guy's eyes can't get on it very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep on moving. Slow process. If you care about 2% 
about your stainless, in this case, or chrome. Guy wants to taper down, get her out of the way. You even put some bags over the wenders and whatnot. Show you one side's kind of done, the other's not. That looks like. So she's she's coming out. She's coming out of it. She's getting there. She's got she's getting some shine. Well, the hooky loopies on the old lanolin Whirler 9000 gave up on me, so we're gonna do the right thing and use a completely wrong foam pad for this application. These are definitely made for fine polishing and some tuning where the lanolin really digs, but I don't have any other options right now. And guys just gotta get her done. There's what she's looking like. Guy's been digging on her for about a day now. And she's starting to come around. I desperately need to wash it, but we went from a polar Texas or whatever they call it, negative 60 to pouring rain today. So I can't get this out yet. It's got a lot of residue and stuff on it. I guy, guy's got to get washed off. But if I hit my shin on that custom hitch one more time, I swear my soul's gonna leave my body. But we'll keep digging on a little bit more. I'm actually gonna sand on the old hood with some 2000 grit and some 3000 grit. Because a guy always likes to layer eyed on the hood when you see cars. Clean that up a little bit more. And then I'm gonna show you how to clean this chrome up very, very cheaply. And see if we can bring her back around. And then we'll wait for the weather to break. And then we'll go dump some water down on its whole head and clean it up a little bit more. Well, obviously the paint on this car is shot, but if a guy wants a trick to make a car look like she really came around, just focus on the old fender humps and the hood and people will be like, Jesus, that came out. So that's what we're gonna do. There's a lot of dirt and bug butts and stuff like that that still stuck in this from whoever sprayed this single stage on it. And I just like to run the old Walmart uh, sandpaper on her. You get them in packs of five. No secret here, you guys have all done this. I'm just gonna do the two hood halves and then polish on her some more. Let's see if it makes it look a little slicker. Well, I keep walking by this dent on here. She's pretty caved in. You know, back in the day, the kids would lean up against these and smoke the mile barrels and these were always caved in like this. So I'm gonna run you through all the necessary steps to bring her back out. And I think if you pay attention and follow along, I'm pretty certain you could do this at home too. So step one is you're going to want to put your hand in here and then push it out. Well, back up here on the chrome. Guy doesn't need to go spend money on all that fancy chrome polish and what have you. All you got to do is let your kids waste an entire bottle of Windex cleaning rocks and sticks. And once they're done with that, you just fill this halfway with white vinegar, the rest with water and then dig under the old lady's sink and grab some of these SOS pads. You want to get the ones with the soap and make sure they're the uh, 0000 flavor. Any less zeros than 0000, like 00, is going to cause some damage on the old plating. So go with the 0000s. Ease on a little bit of the spray. Doesn't need a lot. And ease a little bit onto your old pad here. And I ain't kidding you. This is gonna eat all this right off. If there's still plating, it'll come out of it. Works good on rims too, grills, mirrors, stainless, chrome plated, all that. But if it's scratched heavy, like this guy here, they won't come out of them, of course. But I'll do this one side here and wipe her down and show you what she looks like. All right, get the old Windex out, put some shine on it. Look at that. 
Look at this. You're looking at, get in here and look at it. Get your eye in here. Look at this. That's factory. Well, since it's still raining and I got about 78 billion feet of mud out there, might as well get the Mice Sucker 500 out and see what a guy can find in here. Instead of a guy testing on it here in the shop, see if the old radiator was a problem, I'm gonna do the right thing and just jump in it and see if we can make it 16 miles to the car wash. I've got a pretty good chance. All right, so this one's got the twirly key that doesn't do anything. And you just twirl on it about six times and then you gotta find the, ooh, a couple pumps. mind-bottling. Guys, uh, sit still here and I'll be dipped. He's in gear. Let their fluid drive torquematic locker upper converter do hippie works great. You know, I really do like reading your guys' comments, but I was really confused on this transmission when I got this thing. And after reading your guys' comments, now I'm really confused. I just... I don't know, let off, hit the gas. I'm just gonna go with this, no, let's go with that. The guy just gets flustered with all these options. Captain's log, amps gauge works. Fuel, got it. Oil pressure, enough. Temperature's good. Panel lights, nope. Wipers, nothing. I don't even know what that does. Headlights, two of them. This car is way way too good for me oh never mind horn doesn't work i feel at home this is actually a really neat old dash and everything works i just cannot believe it and then these little guys just bloop. well a guy usually does the self spray but i'm running out of time so i'm gonna zip into this auto digital water shooter oh no matter roll the window up Oh no, she just quit on me. If you're ever gonna break down, go ahead and do it in the auto digital water shooter. Well, this is gonna be interesting as all hell. Still don't understand this key. I gotta get that looked at. Oh. Well, I immediately regret this decision on several accounts. That'll buff out. Ooh, that feels good on the guy's neck. That's too much. That's too much. You really got to get that extra material off the paint. You don't want it to get cloudy and hot. recommend the wind dryers in these automatic ones. So I picked up some jalapenos in a can and I'm gonna make her eat a little bit. I'm gonna stop cranking on her. Getting some smoke out of this guy here and she's licorice. Oh boy is she hot. So I'm thinking it's a spark issue now. The guy's gonna go ahead and give up and call my better half and have her come to the old rescue. You know when life gives a guy lemonades, you just gotta trade it for some bourbons. How shiny this is.
Well, overall, not quite the night of filler I was expecting. The old Dodge learned on me pretty quick. Needs a fuel pump. Needs some electrotronic digital sparkulator shooter work under the hood. And I think I'm going to fix on the brakes a little bit. That's slightly inconvenient. But overall, we accomplished our mission. We got the shine on it, and it doesn't overheat anymore, so fixed. Where's the worst place you guys have broke down? Bleep bloop it down there in the old comments. That was kind of weird. That's never happened to me before, but made things interesting, I guess. Um, if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, keep your greasy side down.